Hi there. In this video, we will go over AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner Cheat Sheet for Domain 4 Billing and Pricing. We will go over these three aspects of Domain 4 Billing and Pricing for the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam, which is 4.1, Compare and Contrast the Various Pricing Models for AWS. 4.2, Recognize the Various Account Structures in relation to AWS Billing and Pricing. And finally, 4.3, Identify resources available for billing support. In a nutshell, we will cover these various aspects for each of the three critical exam uh, curriculum. 4.1, compare and contrast the various pricing models for AWS, which consists of fundamental drivers of cost in AWS, the AWS free tier, how do you pay for AWS, the five cost optimization pillars of AWS, and then pricing for various AWS services. Then we will cover 4.2, recognize the various account structures relation to AWS billing and pricing. And we will go over these four aspects. And finally, we will end with 4.3, identify the resources available for billing support. We will cover AWS billing support, AWS pricing tools, AWS tools for reporting and cost optimization, and end with AWS support plans. Starting with 4.1, compare and contrast the various pricing models for AWS. The first, what are the fundamental drivers of cost in AWS? There are three fundamental drivers of cost with AWS, which are compute, storage, and outbound data transfer. There are no charges for inbound data. Second, AWS free tier. The AWS free tier enables you to gain free hands-on experience with more than 60 products on AWS platform. AWS free tier includes the following free offer types, 12 months free, always free, and trials. How do you pay for AWS? There are three aspects. Pay as you go. This allows you to reduce wasting capacity based on forecasts and pay for just the services you need. Save when you reserve. You enjoy higher savings when you reserve capacity. Finally, you pay less by using more with AWS, you get volume-based discounts and realize important savings as the usage in AWS increases. The five cost optimization pillars of AWS are, you should right size, you should increase elasticity, you should leverage the right pricing model, you should optimize storage, and measure, monitor, and improve. Now going over the various AWS services and the individual pricing for these services. You do not need to uh, memorize everything, uh, but the critical things that you need to remember is EC2 pricing models, what is on demand, what are stock spot instances, what is savings plans, what is reserved instances, and what are the various payment options when choosing a standard or convertible reserved instance. Understanding what is a dedicated host, and briefly understanding what is Lambda pricing model. Going over these topics quickly, on-demand, with on-demand instances, you pay for compute capacity by the hour or second, depending on which instances you run. No long-term commitments or upfront payments are needed. Spot instances allow you to request spare Amazon EC2 compute capacity for up to 90% off the on-demand price. Saving plans are a flexible pricing model they offer low prices on EC2 and Fargate usage in exchange for a commitment to a consistent amount of usage for a one or three year term. Just remember this particular aspect of savings plans. It is for a commitment to a consistent amount of usage for a one or three year term. With reserved instances, provides you with a significant discount up to 75% compared to on-demand instant pricing. There are three reserved in instance types. There's a standard reserve instance, convertible reserve instance, and a scheduled reserve instance. You can choose between the three payment options when you purchase a standard or convertible reserved instance. Either you can go for all upfront, you pay for the entire reserved instance term with one upfront payment, which gives the highest discount. Partial upfront option. You make a low upfront payment and are then charged a discounted hourly rate for the instant for the duration of the reserved instance term. Finally, no upfront option does not require any upfront payment and provides a discounted hourly rate for the duration of the term. However, the discount is up to 75% or lower. 
Finally, dedicated hosts. A dedicated host is a physical EC2 server dedicated for use. Dedicated hosts can help you reduce costs by allowing you to use your existing server-bound software licenses. Finally, Lambda pricing model. For AWS Lambda, you are charged based on the number of requests for your functions and the time it takes for them to run. AWS, AWS Lambda allows 1 million free requests and up to 3.2 million seconds of compute time per month. Going now to pricing for storage, the most important ones that you need to remember are Amazon S3 pricing, Amazon EBS pricing, and Amazon EFS pricing. With Amazon S3, you of course pay only for what you use. There's no minimum fee. There are six Amazon S3 comp cost components to consider. Storage pricing, request and data retrieval pricing, data transfer and transfer acceleration pricing, data management and analytics pricing, and S3 object lambda. The most important for the exam is storage pricing. You pay for storing objects in, in your S3 bu buckets. The rate you're charged depends on your object size, how long you store the objects during the month, and the storage class, which are given over here. With respect to Amazon e Elastic Block Storage Pricing, which is EBS pricing, you will be charged by the amount you provision in gigabytes per month until you release the storage. With Amazon Elastic File Storage Pricing, you only pay for the amount of file system storage you use per month. Moving on to pricing for network and content delivery. For a virtual private cloud, there are no additional charges for creating and managing or using the VPC itself. Route 53, you pay only for what you use, which is the managed hosted zones, the serving the DNS queries and managing the domain names. With Amazon CloudFront, um, you are charged traffic served based on the following dimensions, data transfer out and HTTP or HTTPS requests. AWS Direct Connect pricing. AWS Direct Connect has two billing elements, port hours and outbound data transfer. Port hour pricing is determined by connection type, either a dedicated connection or hosted connection and capacity. Data transfer out over AWS Direct Connect is charged per gigabyte. Elastic load balancing pricing. You are charged for each hour or partial hour that an application, network, gateway, and classic load balancer is running. Pricing for database services. The two main ones are Amazon RDS and Amazon Aurora. With Amazon RDS, you pay only for what you use again. You are built based on the DB instance hours, which is database instance hours storage per gigabyte per month, input-output requests per month, provisioned IOPS per month, which is input-output per second per month, and backup storage and data transfer. Amazon Aurora pricing. You pay only for what you use again. You are built based on database instances, MySQL or PostgreSQL, database storage and input-output, and backup storage. Pricing for migration and transfer. AWS database migration service pricing. You only pay for your replication instances and any additional log storage. With AWS Snowball, you pay only for the use of the device and the data tra transfer out of AWS. Now going over 4.2, recognizing the various account structures in relation to AWS billing and pricing. First thing is AWS organizations. AWS organizations helps you to centrally manage and govern your environment and simplify billing by using a single payment method for all your accounts. The AWS organization route. This is the parent container for all the accounts in your organization. If you apply a policy to the route, it applies to all organizational units and accounts in the organization. An organizational unit is a logical grouping of accounts in your AWS organization. Organizational units enable you to organize your accounts into hierarchy and make it easier for you to apply management and pricing controls. Finally, you have the accounts. You have the management account, 
which has the responsibilities of a payer account and is responsible for paying all the charges that are accrued by the member accounts. You cannot change an organization's management account. The member accounts are the rest of the accounts that belong to an organization. An account can be a member of only one organization at a time. Finally, going to the final aspect of billing and pricing, uh, which is 4.3, identify resources available for billing support. With respect to AWS billing support, you have consolidated billing. Consolidated billing feature in AWS allows you to consolidate the billing and make payment from multiple AWS ac accounts. The billing dashboard, you can use the billing and cost management console to use below features such as estimate and plan your AWS costs, receive alerts if your costs exceed a threshold that you set, assess your biggest investments AWS resources, simplify your accounting if you work with multiple AWS accounts. Second, AWS pricing tools. You have the pricing calculator. The AWS pricing calculator allows you to estimate individual or multiple prices and use templates to appraise complete, complete solutions. The AWS Marketplace is a curated digital catalog that makes it easy to find, test, buy, and deploy third-party software. Another aspect of identifying resources available for billing support are the AWS tools for reporting and cost optimization. To see these details, you can use this link to see these uh, the, see further details about AWS tools for reporting and cost optimization. In a nutshell, the tools for reporting and cost optimization are AWS Cost Explorer, which is a visual visualization tool to understand and manage your AWS costs and usage over time. The use case is to report and inspect. The AWS Trusted Advisor tool. This tool provides you real-time guidance to help you provision your resources following AWS best practices to reduce costs, improve performance, and improve security. The use case is to inspect and right size. AWS budgets helps to improve planning and cost control with flexible budgeting and forecasting. The use case is to budget and forecast. Amazon CloudWatch is a monitoring and observability service built to observe your AWS resources and applications on AWS and on-premises. The use case is to, to report and inspect. AWS Cloud, CloudTrail is a service that enables governance, compliance, operational auditing, and risk auditing of your AWS account. The use case is to inspect, report, and organize. Amazon S3 Analytics S3 Analytics offers several features that help you better understand, analyze, and optimize your storage costs at scale. The use case is to inspect and right size. Finally, AWS Cost and Usage Report contains the most comprehensive set of AWS cost and usage data available. The use case is, is again to report and right size. Finally, we end up with the various AWS support plans. There are four support plans, basic, developer, business, and enterprise. You do not need to memorize all these various aspects. The critical thing that you need to remember is, basic support is included for all AWS customers and includes customer services and committees, seven core checks of the AWS Trusted Advisor Best Practice, best practice Checks, and a AWS Personal Health Dashboard. The rest of the various components of support plans are varied based on the different support plans. If you're on developer support plan, this support plan is recommended if you're experimenting or testing in AWS. The business support plan is recommended if you have production workloads in AWS and the enterpri enterprise support plans is recommended if you have business and or mission critical workloads in AWS. This bring, brings us to the end of this cheat sheet. Please subscribe for more content as we will be creating a cheat sheet for Domain 2 Security and Compliance and we will cover these four aspects of the Domain 2 Security and Compliance exam guide for AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. Thanks for watching.
Please subscribe and hit like and subscribe for notifications. Thank you.